Hey, what's up, guys? I'm gonna show you how to fix the new Mame pack, Mame 2.0 or 0.251. Uh, this update isn't really necessary if you already have the other one working correctly. It's just to get it up to date. It gives you more options with emulators, and uh, some people just feel like they have to update even if it's not gonna make much of a difference. It's the same filtered set. It's just an updated version, so you're not really gonna get any new games or anything like that. Um, but if you just install it the way you do the rest of your games for Retrobat, the rest of your systems, it's not going to work correctly because there's some discrepancies with the way that uh, this version of Retrobat, the, where it looks for the BIOS and what BIOS it's looking for and things like that. They changed the structure. Um, I'm not really sure why. I can't see a benefit to it, but it is the way that it is for now, okay? So... <clears throat> it's going to be pretty simple. First, let's see, let's go to my RetroBat folder. Okay, first you're going to extract the MAME pack. Well, right, let, me, let me back up a little. If you have the previous version installed and you want to update, you need to go into your RetroBat folder, go into Emulators, go to MAME, right here okay and just delete it completely delete that folder and then you're gonna go to your ROMs directory okay and then you're going to find MAME okay and you're going to delete that folder okay and then you're gonna go to BIOS and you're gonna delete that folder um, unless you've added stuff that isn't in my pack, in which case you may want to keep it and just overwrite. But um, I like to do a clean start, just make sure there's nothing extra floating around. And I can show you guys the difference. So um, with the BIOS before, in version 4, Retrobat was using all of the files that are in the emulator folder. Okay, Because MAME has its own directories for... Uh, BIOS and things. So your BIOS normally would go in here in your ROMs uh, and your artwork goes here and everything else. Now in Retrobat V5 it looks for your artwork and it looks for your BIOS in a different location. Okay. And so that's why we're moving everything. So delete your MAME ROMs folder, delete your MAME emulator folder, delete the BIOS folder. Okay. And then you're going to download and extract this pre-scraped MAME uh, 251 ROM set. includes the em emulator. Download that, extract it to the root of your RetroBat folder. Okay, and then you're going to download the BIOS set. Okay, I just updated the BIOS set. It's got everything in the correct places. It has the included artwork for MAME. Um, all the bezels and things, it's got the shaders, it's got all the BIOS in the correct place. So just download that and extract it to also to your RetroBat directory. After you do that, it's going to look like this. You're going to have your BIOS folder, you're gonna, your ROMs and your emulator will be replaced. Now, for MAME, if you're going to use standalone MAME, which I recommend, Okay, the, the bezels are better, the shader's better, it's got better performance than RetroArch, although RetroArch does work just fine. Uh, and RetroArch's a little easier. Now, one bonus to this updated set is you can simply switch your emulator back, which I'll show you how to do, and use RetroArch. The most up-to-date set, 2.251, will work with the most recent RetroArch core. So that's fine. But... If you want to use the standalone for better performance, like I recommend, you're going to go into your RetroBat Emulators MAME folder. Okay, you're going to launch MAME. This is going to be the same process as before, really. Um, MAME, as far as the UI goes and the settings and things, it doesn't change that much. You're going to go down here, click on General Settings, and then once you click that, Okay, so you can either double click it or you can use your um, keyboard keys to navigate. I kind of like to do that. I don't know. Anyway, it doesn't matter. You're going to go down here to uh, 
input assignments. Okay, you're going to go to user interface. No, actually, you don't even need to do that. Go into um, player one controls. You need to set a button for player for up, down, left, right. Okay, you don't need to do any of these right or left stick unless you plan on playing games that use dual dual joysticks, which there are a couple. You can do those. It's not going to hurt anything. Um, I set mine for my D-pad as far as up, down, left, right. If you want to use your joystick for regular games like side scrollers, whatever, which most people do, um, you'll set that as your left stick up, down, left, right. Okay, however you want to use it. Then you're going to come down here. I usually do buttons one through eight. You don't have to. Most games one through six will be sufficient. So button one. Two, three, I usually set as A, B, and right bumper on my Xbox controller. And then four, five, six, I set as X, Y, and left bumper. But again, however you want to set it up, that's for you to figure out. Do player one and player two. Okay, so once you do player one, you've got to go all the way back to the top. And go here to return to previous menu. Then you're going to go into player two. Do the same thing. Okay, and then go to return previous menu. There's one more thing you have to do. You got to go down to other controls and you've got to set your player one start, player two start, player one coin, and player two coin. Okay, then just like before, go up, return to previous menu. Okay, then you're going to go return to previous menu. And this is the important part you have to click save. If you do not click save, it will not save your input binds. Okay return to previous menu and now you can go ahead and exit excuse me I had to sneeze so I muted that for a sec okay now we're gonna go into retrobat and I'm gonna show you how to make sure things are working fine in here You're not going to hear any system sounds, or at least you shouldn't. I have I turn them off when I record anymore because I'm tired of YouTube flagging my videos for audio or whatever that somebody says they own. So, once you get in here, you're going to click on MAME. Sorry, my nose is a little plugged up, so if I sound stuffy, deal with it. <laughs> I get it. You'd be surprised how many people are rude enough to tell you how you're how bad your voice sounds if you're sick or something and you record a video on YouTube. It's crazy. Like they want to use, they want my advice and they want me to help them with a problem, but they can't leave a positive review. They've got to talk trash instead. Okay. So once you're in MAME, you're going to go advanced system options. Okay. Now by default, it's set to auto and that should use your most um, recent MAME core for emulator for RetroArch. But you can go to Librito MAME and just set it as that. It's the same core. That should work with this ROM set. All the controls will be pretty much auto set up and stuff. You, you don't have to do the previous step where you set the controls in MAME if you're going to use RetroArch. But if you want the better performance and the better bezels and everything else, then you need to go to MAME64. Okay, MAME64, just like that. Now, so that's going to use the emulator that was included in the pack the one that we set up the BIOS and everything else for. And it should work perfect. Once you set this to MAME64, you're not going to have any issues. But yeah, so you'll see MAME64. I can start a game here. It loads up quick, looks great. You get good bezels and everything else. Okay. Now, if you go to Mame Libretro, you'll see it's a little different. It's a little glitchier loading up. It's a little slower. still looks okay, but you'll see some tearing and things. And you might have some games that don't, um, don't emulate as well. Also, your shader isn't going to look as good. So in Mame, it has individual settings for shaders for different games so you'll notice that some of them like if I go to 1943 let's see 